All right. So 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, we are talking about the very basic building blocks of geometry. Everything that we do is based off of these things that we're learning today. Okay. They start with undefined terms, point, line, and plane. We really don't have a, an exact definition of these words. We just have come to an agreement that we just kind of know what they are. Okay. So that's why when you're going to write these down, there's no real definition, no great definition of it. We just, we know what it is. And you guys know what these are, right? A point is a, a, a point, a, a, just a pinprick in space. It takes up no space at all. There's no width to it. It's not a giant circle, right? We represent it with a big circle, but it's just a singular tiny point, right? Uh, when we're labeling a point, we label it point A. We use capital letter, okay? Naming stuff is the big idea today, all right? That's a big takeaway today is how do we name stuff? How do we label stuff? That's the I can, I can say. I can name points, line, plane, segment, okay? So make sure that we can name things correctly. So we use capital letter for points. There you go. Point A or point A, or we could just call it A, right? Okay, a line. When we talk about a line, it says it has one dimension, really, right? It's, it's just in one direction. You can think about that, okay? It's a straight path that extends on forever. Now, obviously, we can't draw it forever, so that's why we throw arrows on the end. The arrows represent, tell us that it will extend on forever in both directions. Okay. Uh, when we name a line, we can either name it with a small uh, lowercase letter. If that lowercase letter is over one of the arrows, if that's telling us that that's the name of the line, so we can just call it line L like that. Uh, or we have to use two points that are on that line. It could be any two points that are on that line. It doesn't matter the order of the letters. Okay, so A, B, line A, B, line B, A are the exact same thing. It's just the line that goes between A and B. You notice the other way that we write it here, we have a line with arrows above it. So this is the typical way that we'll name a line is with two points, any two points that are on that line with that line with arrows above. And we would read that line A. Okay. And then our third undefined term here is plane. And a plane we think about as being a flat surface that extends forever in all four directions. So this would be, you know, like a, I'll use the clipboard a lot of times as an example of a plane. But we have to pretend like it extends on forever in all directions. Be like the ceiling extended on forever in all directions. That's a plane. Okay. A plane, when we draw a plane, right, we're going to draw it as a parallelogram here, just because that's the only way that we can represent it. Because we're going to have to show different planes, more than one plane, right? And so we have to have a way to draw it. This is how we draw. We don't put arrows on the end or anything like that. We're just of the understanding that if we see that, we know it actually does extend on forever in our direction. We go to name the plane. To name the plane, this is one that people get wrong all the time. This is one we're going to want to pay attention to. We name the plane. There will either be a capital letter in the corner of the plane. We can just name it plane M if there's that capital letter in the corner. But you got to be careful on that. That capital letter cannot be representing a point. Okay, this there's not a point M, right? This M is the name of the plane, so that is the plane M. Or we can name it using any three points on the plane, as long as those three points are not in a straight line. Right? Okay? So I said we can use three points that are not all on the same line name of plane. And we're only going to use three points to name that. Plane. So we're going to name it plane ABC, it could be BAC, CAD, it doesn't matter the order. Three points that are not in a straight line to name that plane. All right. Any questions on those basic building blocks, naming them, anything like that? 
right? The next one is that we had collinear, coplanar. What does it mean to be collinear? What does it mean to be collinear here? Luke? There you go. Points that are on the same line are collinear. What about coplanar? Ready? Points that are in the same plane. Same plane, right? So collinear, coplanar, and it is coplanar, not coplanar. Okay, we're talking about on a plane for coplanar. So you see the word line right in it. Okay, so in the same line, plane is kind of in here, so it's in the same plane. Collinear, coplanar. All right. Let's look at this example here. We got two questions based off of this figure. Just talk first and next to you. I want you to name those or answer those two questions. Uh, uh, so, um, it's that point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see, I see. Um, so, it is, it is line N or I think the points that are four points that are that's I That's very epic. I just said so I mean, Q, yeah. Q and P are Another name for line PQ. Another way we could name that. Landon? QP. QP. Line QP. What's the other way, Oliver? Line N. Line N. So we got that little case letter on the arrow. Great. How about for plane R? What's another way that we can name plane R? Drew? So plane SPT. SPT we cannot do because they form a straight line. So we got to have, we can't have those three that are in a straight line. Anyways? BPT works great. Okay, two of them can be on the same line, not all three. Okay, what's another way that we can name plane R for this? Okay, BSP. BSP. There you go. You just can't have the three in the same. Give me three points that are collinear. Three points that are collinear. Okay. SP and T. Collinear. Give me four points that are coplanar. Coplanar. Really? BSPT. Great. Could I have said Q in one of those for coplanar? No, 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 because Q is not on the plane. Okay? If it's not contained within that uh, that rect or not rectangle, but that uh, parallelogram, it's not on the plane, so we can't use Q. Great. Any questions on that? Awesome. Move on. So once we have those building blocks, right? We got point line plane. Now we can move on. And we can talk about other things based off of the goal. I was wondering for the Q, why is it not part of the figure? Figure extends forever. So it does, but that would be like um, having this plane, right? But then having a point up here, oh. right? So it's not on. So this will extend send forever, but the point's not on. Right? Yeah, we got to start thinking in three dimensions, which is easier for some of us than, than others. All right. So we're getting into what we call defined terms. That just means we're using point line plane to describe them. Okay. How would you describe a line segment? How would you describe a line segment? What is a line segment in your own words here? Nathan? Part of the line between two points. There you go. Part of the line, right? Between two points. Absolutely. So when I have this picture, I have line AB here. I can also refer to segment AB as part of this line. Okay. Segment AB. Is going to be just this part. Line AB is the whole thing. So we have to make a difference on how we label it, how we name it. We said line AB, so the whole thing, line AB looks like that. Segment AB 
doesn't have arrows on it. So segment AB is just the line without the arrows over. That signifies to us that we are only talking about from point A to point B and that's it. So we can name that segment AB or segment BA, same exact thing. Once you throw the arrows on it, you're saying that we're extending it forever. So we have it here. So that's our line segment. Endpoints, of course, are the points at the end. I know there wasn't a great definition for it, but kind of in the word, right? Uh, what about a ray? How would you describe a ray? It's a line that goes on forever in one direction that ends at one end point. There you go. Got one end point and it goes forever in one direction. Okay. So we can have this picture still and talk about a specific ray. We can talk about ray AB. Ray AB would be an endpoint of A going forever. Wow, I missed it. <laughs> endpoint of A going forever through B. Pretend that goes through B. That would be considered ray AB, and we would draw it like that. We would label it like that. Okay, where we have the endpoint of A and it's going through B, the arrow is going to be over B. It's going through B. Yeah. You gotta, you would have to have another letter or another point over there to tell that we're going that way. We could add a point in and label it that way. Yeah. 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 So, so if we, we could definitely have a ray BA, right? So, ray BA would be point at B going this way. And if we're going to name BA, that ray BA, the end point always comes first. And then the point that we're going to. So we would label it like that. Even though when we look at the picture, the arrow is going to the left. When we label it, the arrow is always going to go to the right. Okay. We always start in our ray and our labeling. We always start with the end point and we go through the other point. So this is always the end point here. End point always first on that ray. And that's kind of the tricky one with rays. Is that endpoint always has to be listed first, and the arrow is always drawn left to right over it. Okay. Tell the person next to you the difference between a line, a segment, and a ray. Line. Oh, sorry, I forgot the name. I am down. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I am God. Oh, wow. Yeah, All right, the next term that we had was opposite rays. Okay, opposite rays. I want you to read your definition to opposite rays. Okay, we'll be up down. And then in your own words, tell the person next to you what are opposite rays. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So, what do we know about opposite rays? What do we know about opposite rays? What has to be true about opposite rays here? Ready? Two rays that share the same endpoint. Okay, so they share the same endpoint. So, are those opposite rays? Yeah. Those are, let me clarify, those are not opposite rays. They share the same endpoint, but what else has to be true here, Brooke? They have to form a line. So, they're going to share an endpoint and they have to form a line. So opposite rays would look something like this, where they share an endpoint and they go in complete opposite directions. They form a straight line. So this would be ray AB and ray AC would be considered opposite rays. So 
opposite rays share the same endpoint, they go in exact opposite directions, they form a straight line. All right, got two questions up here based off of this picture. Talk to Mike. So G could also hold each and on the rays. And J. Wait, there's no answer. Yeah, but that's not an answer. Okay, so you can't. That's not even a point. Yeah, it's not even a point. The J is not a point. is a point. If they draw it like that, that means it's the intersection. Okay, so the rays with the end point is J. Are Hey, you have to use that one word. All right, here we go. Here we go. What's another way to name that? Number one. H2. Is this a line, a segment, or a ray? Segment. How do we know it's a segment? Because there's no arrows. There's no arrows. Okay. And I know it's kind of hard to see from far away sometimes, but no arrows means it's a segment. So we would say that it's segment HG is the other way to say it. Uh, give me the rays that begin with endpoint J here. Um, JG. JG, what? Just give me all. Uh, J A. There you go. So we're starting at J and we're going out each time, starting with that endpoint each time. Okay. Give me two that are opposite rays. Give me two that are opposite. And J H J G are opposite rays. J E J F opposite rays. There you go. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? All right. Excellent. Here's what I want you to do. We're gonna do a little bit of drawing here. Okay, on your page in your notes. Okay, so somewhere in your notes. I want you to draw a plane with a line on the plane. Make sure you a plane with a line on the plane. No, I don't care about points right now. No. Uh, plane, line, on the plane. Check out something around your side. Uh, you agree with their. Oh, I very much disagree because plane only have two times. But it's a good one. No, that, but it's not a plane, so it doesn't even count. It's possibly a piece. No, I didn't put that. I didn't put that. Okay, so most of you have something that looks like one of these three, yes? Yes. Yeah. One of these three is a good representation of a plane with a line on the plane. Raise your hand, tell me which one is the good representation here and why can we say that? Eddie? Why? Yeah, if, if we're thinking in three dimensions, we have to assume that because it extends on beyond the, the, the edge of our plane, that that is not actually on the plane. That like for number one, it's like this, right? I got that line here. I can't tell that it's on the plane. So if it's going to be on the plane, it needs to be contained on the plane. It needs to be within that parallelogram that we use for the plane, okay? So please be careful of that, okay? Next one that I want you to draw. So fix that if you need to. Fix it if you need to, where we don't have it wrong.
The next one that I want you to draw, I want you to draw a plane and a line that goes through it. A line that crosses through the plane. So think about my plane and think about a line that's going through it and out the other side. How do you think you can represent that? You're seeing an example of it already today. You might not have uh, realized it. You want a plane, you want a line that's going through the plane, and the cutting through the plane. Oops. See some people that have some ideas here. But a lot of what I'm seeing is like that first example that I showed up here. But remember, I said that that could have just been the plane and then the line in front. We got to be able to represent that it's going through that plane. Through that plane. So if it's cutting through the plane, one, one of our words was intersection, right? Intersection is what point do they share? Or what set of points do they share? If I have a plane and a line going through it, how many points do they have in common? One, right? It's going to cross through one singular point. So let's have that one singular point on our plane, okay? Our line is going to cut through that one singular point. That's it. I know that it's going to cut through and it's going to be off the plane, right? But it's going to be on that one point. It's going to cut through that plane at that one point. I don't want to stop it there because that looks like a ray, right? And I said a line. So it will represent a line. If I just continue this line, well, that's no different than this. So what we do is something like that. We see a dashed line. That dashed line tells us it's there, but it's behind something. Okay. So we want to show that it's behind. So now, hopefully, we can start to wrap our mind around this. And this is again one of those spatial reasoning things that's easier for some people. We can look at that and realize what's happening. And what's happening is we've got this plane, and we've got a line that's coming up through it. You're going to see that line up here. You're not going to see it here. You're going to see it again underneath, right? And where we can't see it, that's where we put the dotted line. We saw that earlier uh, in one of our examples. We just didn't realize. Okay. All right. Good deal. So, uh, and then one more that I want you to draw. Last one should be the easiest one. Draw a plane and a line that does not intersect with the plane at all. A plane and a line that does not intersect with it at all. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. So here's my plane. If I want to draw a line that does not intersect it, here's my line that does yeah. not intersect it. Right? Don't try to use fancy. I'm trying to put it over it because people can get confused with it. If it's not part of the plane, just make it not part of the plane. Okay. Yeah. Nice and easy. Right. Hey, the, uh, the only other thing here. The only other thing that I want to show uh, is about these intersections. And we talked about intersection briefly. It's the, it's the set of points that they have in common that they share. So depending on what shapes you have, or a line, a plane, a ray, whatever, 
those intersections are going to look different, right? Between two lines is just that point, right? The intersection between this line and this segment, what's the intersection between the whole line and the segment? The intersection is what they have in common. Well, they have in common the entire segment. So that's the intersection, okay? Intersection is not necessarily where do they cross, it's what do they have in common? It's what do they share, okay? You look at this, this is showing two different planes intersecting. That's a difficult one to draw. Okay, that's why I didn't have you try to draw. But two different planes intersecting. If you have two planes that intersect, they intersect at a line. That would be like the ceiling and the wall, right? What do the ceiling and the wall have in common? That line across the top. That's the intersection. It's what do they share? What do they have in common? It's not where do they cross. What do they share? What do they have in common? All right. Good deal. Any questions on it? 